stop or give it up. Killing infidels always got it planned. Underhand, give a lot of yell. My, 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 I, I, whoa. My, 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 Sharia. My, Sharia. My, Sharia. My, 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 Sharia. No more Sharia. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome yeah. to Enemies of the State. It is Friday, July 17th, and my name is Damon Rosen. I am still filling in for our intrepid leader, <laughs> Tom Trento, guy. who is away on special assignment, but he will be back right here on Monday for your listening and viewing pleasure. Station ID, you're listening to 740 WSBR Radio in sunny South Florida. If it is midnight, you are listening on Red State Talk Radio. Go to redstatetalkradio.com, Studio B, midnights. And uh, Mark, it is the it's last, last day, day of, of Ramadan. Ramadan. And if, if it's Friday, it is? Jumpin' Juma <laughs> Freaky Friday! <laughs> Jumpin' Juma Freaky Friday, and yes, this is this, we should have a really whiz-bang Jumpin' Juma Freaky Friday Unfortunately, today. Unfortunately, we need a two-hour show to get all the freakiness <laughs> into this Jumpin' Juma Freaky Friday. That's right. Um, obviously, there was the terrible tragedy yesterday in Chattanooga, Tennessee, that it, uh, resulted in the deaths of four United States Marines at the hands of one Muslim jihadi who is now testing the theory of 72 virgins. That's right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was glued to my TV set all day y yesterday just, just watching the car. I mean, I, I was hoping and praying that nothing was going to happen to these people. There was just going to be some wound. But then, then, the, then when they flashed the four Marines that were killed, it, it just – I. I, I literally broke cried. I broke yeah. down and cried. And you're a former Marine, are you not? Yeah, yeah. And it's um and it it was just you know It's not not yeah, good. And it was just but you know Let's, the thing about uh, this we had we predicted this. We predicted this name and we've been saying it for years and years. Years and years. Yep. So years and years. So let's what were you uh, doing? What let's were you get doing? right into um an update from Tom. We taped just before this show today. And we're going to get uh, Tom's view on uh, what happened in Chattanooga yesterday, as well as a couple other things uh, that are newsworthy. So rack that up there and uh, let's see what Tom had to say to us this morning. Okay, and now we have Tom Trento himself Skyping in, uh, still on special assignment uh, with a little update for us. Go ahead, Tom, please. Hey, guys. Good to, uh, good to be back. Um, and... Uh, Maybe before the end of our little exchange here, I'll give you a hint as to one of the places I went to on our uh, uh, on my assignment over the past week. But I may not even be back. You guys are doing such a great job with wonderful guests and on top of the news and getting great results. I may uh, have to go on assignment for another week. Um, no, excellent Come work, back, really. Um, yesterday, obviously. Uh, we have a couple of things. Today is the last day of Ramadan, and the all the FBI and federal agencies have said during the month of Ramadan, uh, be on special alert. Now, this is completely bizarre because yesterday the FBI, in the initiation of their investigation into the Chattanooga shooting, another shooting at um, a recruiting center, uh, they f tripped over backwards. And this goes to the excellent capability that Nihad Awad and his friends at Council on American Islamic Relations and all the other phony baloney Muslim Brotherhood groups, the excellent capability they have on muzzling the FBI. And here's a, here's a main point on this Chattanooga tragedy. The FBI, even today, is tip, tripping over itself, not to mention Islam, not to mention Islamic terrorism, not to mention jihad, and uh, trying neatly to say this could be a criminal situation. You know, we don't know. There may be domestic terrorism. And when our leading organization dedicated to defeating Islamic Jihad in the United States of America can't start with the premise 
that all the forensic indicators, the guy's a Muslim, he's got an Islamic <laughs> beard, he shot at a military installation, he shot at a recruiting center with the typical AK-type gun. You at least say, look, folks, the facts force us to start thinking this is an Islamic attack by a Muslim jihadi. Now, as we get into the investigation, it may lead us elsewhere, but that's where we start with this thing. I oh, agree. The FBI can't do that, and it's a disgrace. This Department of Justice ought to be disgraced. We know this. This is old news. But um, let me stop there. If you have any well, questions? Yeah, I, I do. One thing that I noticed, Tom, was that during the the press coverage that was happening after the fact, all of a sudden it's ISIL. Oh, was he inspired by ISIL? ISIL, ISIL this, ISIS this, ISIL this, ISIS this. Everything goes to ISIS. It's like that is the only entity in the world that ever, you know, radicalize anybody. They, they, there have been no mention of, well, hey, you know what? The shoe bomber, ISIS didn't even exist before then, and he was radicalized. Fort Hood. No ISIS before then. He was radicalized. Let's go back to Arkansas. The same, almost exact parallel, same attack. Same no, no ISIS. I mean, what is it going to take to for these people to wake up and realize, hey, you know what? It might be the Mosque. And the guy's parents. The guy's parents are under investigation from the uh, FBI. It, you know, all this jihad starts at home. Do you not agree, Tom? Well, yeah, yeah. The the The... The shooter, 24-year-old Mohammed Yusuf uh, Abdul Aziz, his father um, is a, a Palestinian. He was born in, in Kuwait. We know that. The father was on the watch list. He was subsequently taken off. The father right, right now works, I believe it's with the Chattanooga cops, as a um, as a uh, an unarmed uh, security guard kind of. With uh, access to the water uh, system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was recently wa- watching wrong. <laughs> CNN because I love to go to CNN to get the uh, the cleansed version of Islamic jihadi attacks. Ashley Banfield, who's just an outright twenty four karat gold idiot, she um, she goes through all this information and she she lists the June first. Uh, she didn't list the June first shooting in uh, in Little Rock. That was with um, uh, Abdul Hakim. Mujahid Mohammed, Carl's Carlos Bledsoe, <laughs> using our son's, yes. you know, yes, Carlos Carlos Bledsoe. Uh, yeah, that was June first, two thousand nine. He shot and killed uh, Private Andy Long, and and he shot also uh, and wounded. He didn't kill um, Izul uh, Izul Lazar, the last guy, uh, last name of the guy. But uh, that was June first, two thousand nine. Then on November fifth of two thousand nine was Nidal Hassan. At, uh, at Fort Hood, and then this one now on a base. Ashley Banfield goes, well, of all these shootings, she goes, the only commonality, <laughs> that was her term, is that they're all men in their 20s. <laughs> right? That's the only one. That's, right. That's and really you know, the only commonality. I mean, just, it's just insane. It's just insane. I, I was watching CNN last night, and it was late. Uh, I think it might have been international. And after spending five minutes talking about it, and talking about the guy and showing him, he goes, and we want to make it clear, There's uh, at this point, there's no link to some world jihad. <laughs> there's no clear link to some world jihad. Uh, it, well, it's, it's getting so difficult for the FBI to carry on this nonsense. Now they're starting to say, well, we're, this could be a terrorism investigation, <laughs> right? Well, what kind of terrorism? Uh, well, we know that's a problem, but... Um, what needs to happen? I mean, I think the, the Marines and, and the servicemen and women of this country have to say, look, um, and you had a Gozi on yesterday, and Ari Gozi has told us so many times that every uh, member of the Israeli Defense Forces is required to right. carry their weapon with them wherever they are. Exactly. He said, if you do not have your weapon with you, you're not considered a soldier, right? Now, the, the counter argument is, oh, well, they're in the middle of, uh, of a war and the jihadis are trying to attack them. We're the great <laughs> state. They want to attack us first, at least. And I, there was just a, um, a uh, counterterrorism woman expert on saying, what we know is guns are not the solution to this problem. Guns are not the solution, she said. We don't need more guns anywhere. Well, we're, we're arguing that the military service people 
should have a, have the, at least their service revolver. Yeah. Have, yeah. Not their yeah, revolver. Yeah, right. have their, exactly. uh, their, whatever they carry now, nines or forty fives. Whatever right. it is, they How should have learn? that with them wherever they go all the time. That's not a that's not a militaristic country. Right. That's a military man or woman trained to use the weapon increasing layers of protection, particularly for exactly. themselves in these soft target places. Who the heck's going to want to be a recruiter anymore? You're sitting duck in a, in a carnival is what you are. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Tom, I just have one little uh, follow-up question. Talking about the uh, – we haven't had your input. I, I know you're going to do a full expose on the whole abortion thing that happened with Planned Parenthood and how they're harvesting body parts, how they're – you know, it, it's very ghoulish, you know, Honestly, what just a quick little in, you know, input because I know you've been involved in that movement for a while. Is um, what's your input on that? Sure. In a, in a former life, I was a, a pro-life activist. Um, spent a lot of time on that issue and came at it from a cultural perspective, which was how ought a society treat weak members? Right. And in our society, the weak members are um, uh, elderly people are handicapped uh, people who have all kinds of disabilities and uh, and unborn people. And we've looked at, at culture's past, how they treat elderly and, and retarded people, that's right. the term. Uh, and they use them for experimentation and all the crazy <laughs> things. So what, what happens to a culture when it turns on its weakest member? And my area of specialty was, uh, um, you know, biogenesis was... Uh, Abortion, infanticide, euthanasia, those three areas. Right. And we argued 30 years ago that if a culture can kill its weakest member for whatever reasons, then that eats away and starts to negatively affect the way people think in a culture. And you're going to have dramatic consequences just as the sun follows the evening. Right. And, right. and I'll, I'll lay out you know, the consequences of a culture that uh, chooses to um, identify unborn babies identify their parts, and then get a seller on one end and match the buyer, the the doctor, and the right. seller, the receiver of a lung or a leg or whatever the case may be. It's it's just bizarre stuff. You know, well, on, on that topic, uh, the, it's the hard left. You know, it's, the, it's that is so pro-abortion. They're also the, the same group that is pro-gay marriage, pro-homosexual right. lifestyle, and they will argue that a baby could be born gay. Right. You could be, but well, it takes a person to be gay. Well, how could this not be a person? How how are you aborting something, but it's not a person, but yet it could be born gay? You can't argue both sides of that, can you? Yeah. Or am I Dam missing something? Damon, Damon. You're arguing logic. A young student. Have I not taught you well that you can't expect logic or coherence or consistency from the left? Have I not taught you well? <laughs> yes, Massa. <laughs> yes, Master <Chinette>, though. <laughs> uh, um, we all know, uh, look, our issues of national security, and these same folks hate Christians, hate conservatives, right. and hate... Um, Israel. They, it's a red it, green it's alliance. Just, red, yeah, it's yeah, the, the reason it's a yeah. gay loving person, you got to hate Christians and hate Israel and love the Palestinians. Well, it's well, all, my, it's all my, my take on the whole on the whole ab abortion thing there with uh, them selling body parts, they've become so numb they they, they don't even think that. The thing that's in there at the, even at eight or nine months, they don't even think of it as a being. They think of it as a thing, like an appendix or something like that, and therefore, hey. Why not? And, and their mindset is, well, hey, you know, if we're going to throw it away, we might as well use it for something good. And, 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 and it makes sense. It, but it's and, and that when I started hearing that argument, it flashed me back to the World War Two, Dr. Mengele, who was his same logic and same rationale together. Hey, we're killing these Jews anyway. You know, they're just we're going to throw them away. Why don't we do experiments on them at, at first to uh, learn something for the greater good of the society? And that's that's that mindset that they get into, this greater good of the society, how we can do something that's... So they, they, they look at the unborn baby as something that's just nothing, just like they looked at Jews as nothing. They're, they're parts, they're parts, of which, and that's... Do you agree with me on that rationale, Tom? Or? Well, not only do I agree, but the philosophers have coined a term... For that Weltanschung, that worldview, it's called utilitarianism. Oh, really? And uh, the value of an individual is determined upon his utility to society. 
and I, I used to have a, um, a, a nemesis back in the Denver days but of pro-life activism, Dr. Warren Hearn out of Boulder, Colorado. Right. He uh, had expertise, one of the world's best DNE, dilatation and extraction abortionists, doing um, abortions in the ninth month. And, and people think that it's illegal to do uh, third-term abortions. It's not illegal at all. There's a companion case, the Roe v. Wade, Doe versus Wade, that legitimized abortion through any phase of the pregnancy based upon certain economic or emotional factors. So if a woman in her eighth or ninth month says, I economically can't handle this baby, and the economic weight is going to cause me to have a nervous breakdown, there are physicians that will say, okay, for the health of the mother, uh, not just life of the mother, for the health of the mother, this baby needs to be extracted. And Warren Hearn um, specialized in DNA, dilatation and extraction opening up the uterus with unique uh, wow. equipment and then extracting a full baby out and then uh, making sure all its parts are there. But at the end, you cut the head off so that the nervous system is killed. Oh, God. And he simply said, look, you know, this is what people want. I'm providing it. And we've just got to the next point. People want those parts now, and yeah. Planned Parenthood is providing it. This is the world we live in. But I'm going to give you um, – uh, I'll let you guys play with all this stuff. And, and well, yeah. There was today one and, thing uh, I was going to say. Uh, Obamacare has many components of utilitarianism to it as far as uh, who is eligible to get certain treatments. Is it worth the money? I mean, and it, it actually is. I wouldn't say certain components. There's a lot of components to it. I often go through the day arguing with myself, <laughs> saying, how the hell did this guy in six years so destroy this country? Then I say, wait, wait. <laughs> seven years ago, you guys were saying that he was going to destroy this country. <laughs> yes, I know, but how did he actually do it? You wrote it out exactly how he did it. Yes, but how did he do it? And I go back and forth, and I say, we got to pull the video out from 2007. I know. When we were running around saying, this is what Obama's going to do, <laughs> downsize the military, and and downsize the economy to get us out of the superpower. Enable our enemies. Disable yep. disable the thing. The screw whole, Israel. The screw Israel. <laughs> we got to we got to do one of our 2007 presentations and update it. You know, side by side. We got to do that. But let me With do this. Crystal, crystal ball. I have to get going. I'm right. going to give you a hint. And I was on special assignment. Right, I right. did take a, a day of R and R. I gotta, I gotta admit, yeah. I took a day of R and R. And what now, a place was I? <laughs> I'm gonna give you a hint. And um, basically, uh, friends of mine invited me for a day with them uh -huh. to uh, to relax. And I was <laughs> in the area. I said, Yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I went someplace. And it was the worst experience of my life. <laughs> um, I'll talk about it next week with my friends that I, that I went. I won't name any names. Yeah. But I'm going to give you a hint where I was, okay? All right. Go Watch ahead. carefully. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you catch it? Uh, I missed it. You missed it. You went to a coffee shop? You went to a coffee shop? <laughs> you may have to freeze frame that. I'll do it one more time a little slower. All right, there you go. A little slower. Okay, okay. You ready? One more there you time. go. Uh, oh no! <laughs> I still missed it. I caught it. Slow I motion. <laughs> Did you see it? it was yes, turned, I saw it, man. I saw it. I saw the it. The viewers right. can see it, or they can rewind it. No, they, uh, our um, radio listening audience, so we'll, we'll, you have to go they watch won't it. No, they will know. But we'll tell them next week. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, you will be all back right. on Monday, correct? Right. Yes, I will be back Monday. Yes. All right. Have a good weekend. Right. Great job, you guys. Doing a fabulous job. All right, see thanks. You. See you. Okay. All right. Well, there you had it from the man himself, there Tom you go. Trento, who will be back here on Monday. See, you could get more out of Tom in 15 minutes than me in 55. So, <laughs> but stick around anyway. Mark, before we yeah. went to Tom's uh, update, right? We were talking about uh, watching the coverage of the shooting in Chattanooga yesterday. Yes, and yes. Uh, you were doing what? You said you're just hanging around the house watching. Uh, well, I was glued watching to all the coverage. Well, I was glued to. I, would, I got up to to do something else, and then I heard there was a shooting, and 
it started to sound so much like the Bledsoe case in yes. Arkansas. You know, we're going next to a. I go, oh no, 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 this is not happening. And I keep watching and no, watching. No, it was worse. It, it was worse. And then, it, then I'm hearing reports, and then the Marines, and then I, you know, start crying, and then the, you know, it, 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 I was just glued to it. So I mean, I, I could not get away from. I was riveted to the TV set of of everything that was going on. You know, like I thought every American should be doing, to be quite honest with you. But, yeah, it's but amazing. what were you doing, man? Uh, I was doing a little bit of work from home and watching the coverage. But yeah, I, you, I, I texted you about it, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Yes, actually you did. You, you informed you said, me of it. And, and you go, I was oh my God. I running around and then I got, went in and watched the rest of it. But um, guess what our dear leader <laughs> was doing? <laughs> As the shooting was going on. Oh, I don't know. Probably. Uh, yeah. Come oh. over to my screen well, and I'll I, show uh, you. How about this? Is that, is that good? White House <laughs> celebrates Muslim holiday on day Muhammad murders four Marines. <laughs> They're talking about Muhammad the shooter. <laughs> yes, talking about Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz. So as this Muslim right. ha- is performing jihad in Chattanooga, Tennessee... <laughs> the White House is celebrating the Muslim Holy Day. Are you? Yeah, it's it's it's, a, it's disgusting. You know, it's the same thing that happened like a, during uh, Benghazi. When he heard about Benghazi, was he up twenty four hours getting all the updates? What's going on? Oh my God! Oh my God! No, no, because Hillary's emails are gone. How am I supposed to know? What we what we do know is that that next morning he jumped on a plane and ran out for a fundraiser. Complete oblivious. Oh, yeah, to Vegas, I think it was. Yeah, to Vegas for a fundraiser. I mean, how much more non-compassionate do you have to be saying? Say, you know what, we might want to hold off on this thing for 24 hours. Well, listen, the mosque in Chattanooga that this kid went to, the Islamic Society is actually canceling their their, uh, Eid uh, al-Fatir for tonight. Now, but the White House did. I mean, you can't, uh, you know. (laughs) <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see if and when the president actually contacts the families of the four dead Marines like he had time to go to uh, uh, to write letters to the 46 families of the prisoners, the drug uh, oh, charge prisoners. Is this the same president who didn't have time to pick up a phone or write a letter to the... The, the girl who got murdered out yes, in San uh, Francisco, Katie. he still yes. has not contacted her? No. no nobody in the administration no. has contacted her? But no. he has time to go to a prison? Yes. Yes. Come God. to my screen real quick because this is, this is from whitehouse.gov. Right. Okay, this is on the White House Twitter account. This is two from, hours, two hours before, you know, while this shooting is going on, he's writing, he's doing this. From my family to yours, Eid Mubarak at POTUS to Muslims celebrating Eid al-Fatir. Statement by the president on the occasion of Eid al-Fatir. Michelle and I would like to extend our warmest wishes to Muslims in the United States and around the world celebrating Eid. As Muslims mark the end of the month, they are reminded that Ramadan is a time to reflect spiritually, build communally, and aid those in need. While Eid marks the end of Ramadan, it marks a new beginning for each individual. A reason to celebrate and express gratitude on this holy day. Now that's in contrast to the Islamic State just prior to Ramadan, calling for jihad and martyrdom during the holy month of Ramadan. Apparently, Barry from Hawaii did not get the message. For millions of Muslims, the morning of Eid is marked with the call to prayer echoing through cities and towns across the globe. Millions of people head to local mosques for special Eid prayers, followed by festive gatherings, gift exchanges, and feasts among friends, neighbors, and families. And chopping people's heads off. He keeps forgetting that. (laughs) And blowing up people and suicide bombing and everything. The diversity of traditions paint the vibrant images we see from around the world capturing the spirit and excitement of Eid. Colorful dresses or white garments decorating the masses of people standing in lines for prayer. Lanterns and ornaments lighting up bazaars and neighborhoods. Intricate henna designs painted on hands of young girls and women. 
and an abundance of delectable foods and aromatic cuisine. Yeah. Where is the head <laughs> chopping, Barry? <laughs> While some of some of the people out there are chopping off heads, it's like you might want to ignore those. Oh no. my goodness! But. So, so that that's that's pretty important stuff. Now, being the last day of Ramadan and happy Ramadan. Hey, speaking of Mark. Yes. Where has little stinky Imam Abdullah been all week? <laughs> I don't know. I have no. I think he's off with Tom. I think you do not think that Tom <laughs> took Imam Abdullah with him on special assignment, well, you? Well, had to you? clear him out and keep a close eye on him. It is Ramadan. You never know. You know, he could, he could just go, you know, all jihad on him. I was hoping to see the little guy today. <laughs> but he's not here. I'm sure he has been pigging out every <laughs> night and getting his yeah. belly all fattened up. <laughs> but, uh, uh, hopefully he'll be back and we could ask him a few questions about everything. Uh, that's going on. But it's the last day of Ramadan, and anyone who's been watching knows we love to give Ramadan Bombathon updates. That's right. We what do. do you got for us today, Mark? We have the Ramadan, well, the week before in day 22. We that's had day 22. 20, 20, 26, 55 wounded, 2177 dead bodies, suicide bombings, 445 terror attacks, 221. Day 26, the numbers jumped up to wow. 265, all the way up to... Uh, 2,492 dead bodies, but we still got one more day. The numbers just aren't in, Damon. So we're at the uh, you know. Oh, there's the newest one. This yeah, is uh, yeah, yep. this is the latest, and they're they're reporting pending. Pending, because hey, you know, you could actually double these numbers today. Well, you're not going to double is... them, but being the last day, being <laughs> with the Islamic know. State's call for martyrdom and jihad. Yeah, these numbers could rise significantly. Everyone, I'm sorry that we didn't have final numbers for you That's here on the last yet. day of Ramadan, but on Monday, You're right. we'll give you the final tallies. And based on those last numbers, we might be able to hit 3,000 dead bodies. Yeah, you know. I'm sure just, you're all on the edges of your seat. I'm sure Imam will come back and give us a clear update. For those yeah. results. And, it, it, you know, why do people think that, you know, <laughs> Put absolutely zero connection to Islam on any of this, Damon. You know, it, it, it gets so ridiculous. You know, we even have... it's an absolute joke. Now, here's here's this is right out of Fox, and I know a lot of people are going to say, "Oh, Fox is uh, yeah, yeah. you know, right wing this and whatever." You know, they're 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 the closest thing to honest of any of the networks. But if you come hey. to my screen again, hey, our our message is getting out. They're using the word devout. Yes, more religious or radical. Chattanooga gunman said to be turning more devout. devout. Yay! They but finally to used the term. What? Devout to Islam, right? Tom has been saying this for years. The problem, folks, is not radical Islam. The problem is Islam <laughs> itself. You're right. Okay? I'm holding the noble Quran. It is the words in this book right. that caused the violence. People are not perverting it. They are not hijacking it. They right. are following the words. Now, they are devout. Now, these are not words of Damon. These are not words No, of, I'm not that smart to come up with them on my own. No, these, I mean, these are the words of this man, Sayyid Kutub, Milestones. He is the ideological, the Mount Rushmore, if you will, of Islamic Jihad. He is the one Bin Laden follows and everybody else. Yeah, he the, looks most, this... the, 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 the modern Islamist movement. Right. Dating back to the late 20s. Right. You have it in, in, the, in the 60s. He revised it and said, hey, listen, if you're not pure Islamic enough, then you are a, a apostate. You, if you do not follow the words of the Quran, literally, and take the Sharia as something in your heart, then you are an apostate to Islam. And that idea that he had right there results in that other book that you have down there, Damon. Which Reliance is, of which the is, Traveler. Which says of the Sharia, what the Sharia or Sharia law is. And it's codified, certified by all major institutions in, in the world. Regardless, and in regardless of what Isa Hajj says about it. Right. That is what Islam is. What Sayyid Kutub 
is saying is what Islam is. The vast majority, 80, 90 percent of the world says what Qutub's milestone Islam is and what and he takes it step by step chronological order says no this is what muhammad said this is what muhammad said this is what muhammad said and this is how you you're supposed to react and jihad is the ultimate goal speaking of come to my screen All right chattanooga jihadi and this is from his uh basically he left like a memoir okay that uh came out either very late last night or uh, i read it this morning chattanooga jihadi muhammad's companions all fought jihad for the sake of Allah. Yes, I agree. The guy is not making up his own version of Islam. Of Islam. He did not hijack anything. <laughs> he did not pervert anything. Now, he followed what's in this thing. <laughs> That's all he's doing. So when Fox says devout, they are absolutely right. It yes. is about time. About there, it time. Is again. there it is again. More religious or radical, Chattanooga gunmen said to be turning more devout. If you get nothing else out of this show today, right. I want you to realize that when the Islamic State or Al-Qaeda or lone wolves right. self-radicalize <laughs> Islam perverting and hijacking lone wolves, all they're doing is becoming devout. They are, not, they are not veering from now, the message contained in the Quran. And I love the argument that, that liberals and leftists and, and people who do not know are, are, are trying to make up something that the Quran does not say. Say, oh, these guys are just stupid. They're uneducated. They're, you know, they don't know, you know. No, this was a smart, educated no, guy. This guy was, was went to American high school. Graduated went to college. American, went, went to college. Not only did he go to college, he went to University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Got his electrical engineering degree which i know is a very difficult degree because i was studying that at one point and i've taken all the very very difficult electrical engineering graduated from a, with, with a double e and then at 24 years old decides to blow himself up excuse me you cannot put a more textbook picture of how to not radicalize somebody by putting them in, into a a conservative area as Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then graduated from the University of Tennessee. Are you kidding me? This guy, if you had to draw it up on a piece of paper of how not, not to make someone go jihad, this would be it. Yet this guy went jihad. Yes. Now. So what's the problem here, Damon? What's the problem? It's not radical Islam. Right. It's Islam. It's Islam. And for those wondering, you know, actually, I'll get back to that one. Here's on the topic of is it radical Islam? Is it Islam as Islam? <laughs> How about those on certain networks right. that refuse to link Islam and terrorism? How in the world are you going to defeat an ideological enemy that you refuse to identify? I watched CNN for several hours yesterday and one of them, I mentioned this one on with Tom, and uh, they, at the end of every segment that they covered the Chattanooga shooting yesterday and talking about Muhammad Yusuf Abdul Aziz, they questioned if Islam played a link. In fact, oh, we're going to play this in a second. This, this is unbelievable. If you will get the, uh, uh, the CNN clip yep. that has the former assistant director at the FBI. You are not going to believe this. This is the one about come mom, to Yeah, right? come to my screen. I'll, I'll prep okay. it for you. Then we'll just okay. show right. the video. It's real quick. CNN analyst, unsure if mass shooter Mohammed Youssef <laughs> Abdulaziz's name is Muslim. Muslim. <laughs> okay. We gotta play this. So forget first. linking Islam is the cause of this. <laughs> they can't even, they're not even sure if a guy named Muhammad Yusuf Abdul Aziz with the Sharia compliant beard down to his nipples is Muslim. Well, you know, you, I can see the confusion because I'm not really sure, you know, if people yeah. who are named, uh, uh, 
Give, give me something. I Dang. know. Is Patrick Fitzgerald an Irish name, Mark? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. You know, here's the story. <laughs> before I, before, before we show you the video, because you would think I'm lying. Right. You would think I'm lying to you, but we will show you the video proof. All right. On Thursdays, the lead CNN analyst Tom Fuentes was unwilling to conclude that the perpetrator of a mass shooting against servicemen in Chattanooga was Muslim. John Berman asked the former FBI assistant director. Fuentes, Tom Fuentes, is the former FBI <laughs> assistant director. Now that we have the name, the key questions are what? Fuentes replied, I know what the name sounds like, but we don't know that it's a Muslim name. We know it's an Arabic name. We don't know what this individual was believing in, Islam. And what, that's what they're going to be trying to determine. Yep. Tom, let me help you out, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> He's definitely a Muslim, and you should probably start to maybe, I don't know, I know. clue. And start it there. Play the video so people don't think I'm lying about the former assistant director of the FBI with this nonsense. <laughs> Tom, tell me what's going on right now in this investigation. Now that we have the name, the key questions are what? Well, first of all, John, I don't, you know, I know that uh, <laughs> what the name sounds like, but we don't know that it's a Muslim name. We know that it's an Arabic name. We don't know what this individual was believing in, and that's what they're going to be trying to determine. Hold on, hold on. We got to pause it right there. Uh, that was it. That, that, yeah, mean, but, I... but it was so, it was such an insane comment. It was such an insane comment. The CNN reporter is like, excuse me? Check this out. I got to state the obvious here. This is a name. <laughs> Uh, this is a Muslim name, Muhammad Yusuf yeah. Abdulaziz. Does that change the nature of this investigation? <laughs> uh, I've got news for you. I mean, when CNN <laughs> is almost embarrassed for their own, uh, yes. their own analyst, uh, Houston, we've got a problem. Problem here. I, hey, so, F so F F Tom FBI, Fuentes, F FBI, FBI, former FBI <laughs> assistant director. Do you hang out with James Clapper on the weekends by any chance? As John Guandola says from our ex-FBI agent who wrote the book on the Muslim Brotherhood for the FBI, said, hey, you know what? When a guy's name is Mohammed, that might be a clue. <laughs> yeah. It's That's a clue. Of, I know. It's kind of a clue. clue. <laughs> and Insane. you know, here and here's another one for you, Tom Fuentes. Mark, come to my screen, please. All right. Chattanooga jihad murderer attended Islamic Society of Greater Chattanooga. Tom, oh. are you going to question <laughs> Tom Fuentes? Do you want to question if he's Muslim just because he attends the Islamic <laughs> Society of Greater Chattanooga? And also, his first name is Muhammad. <laughs> I mean. Uh, I'm just curious, Tom, yeah, would yeah, attending I, the Islamic Society of Greater Chattanooga, would that be enough of a hint for you <laughs> that the guy is Muslim? Just asking. Just asking. Get back to me on that yeah, one. All right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Believable. I mean, so uh, on top of the FBI being completely defanged by Barry from Hawaii's administration and the Eric Holder Department of Justice, purging the FBI counterterrorism manuals from any reference to Islam and terrorism and jihad, absolutely removing them. You know, uh, profiling, <laughs> profiling, which is how you really should conduct, uh, you know, crime prevention like the Israelis do. Hey, I, I got another clue for you here too. This Hit is me. what we talked about earlier. You know, when a guy states on his Facebook, Muhammad's companions all fought jihad for the sake of Allah. That's a hint too. That's a hint too. That's a hint. <laughs> that's a hint. That's I don't know. Hint. Maybe I'm just a hater, you know, but you know, that's a hint. Oh. You know, I did it, it just it's All right, just let's crazy. let's put Chattanooga to rest for now. I'm sure we'll have more to talk about. Oh, just the gist of it is our media is lying to us. Radical Islam is not the problem. Devote devout Muslims are the problem. Right. Not radical. Devout Muslims. And there were people the that go by the book. That's the problem. And we know that. And we're not just guessing at that. We actually know we did we have surveys. Go there and ask them. Are you do you believe Sharia should be the law of the land? Yes. You know, a large percentage of them. Also, 
is uh, Bin Laden, how hot, Osama Bin Laden a hero? Yes, yes, just all these questions that say, oh my God, these guys are radical. They're not radical, they're not the bad. See, I'm getting caught in the trap. It's radical if you don't believe in this stuff. Islam itself is radical compared to Judeo-Christian Western societies. Islam as an ideology itself is radical. The people blowing up stuff and chopping people's heads off they are not radical Muslims. They are devout Muslims. It is the ideology itself that is radical when compared to the rest of what we call Western society. Let's move on right. from that. Okay. Uh, I don't. This story did not make it big in the news, but it's kind of important. Um, it. If you could come to yeah, my screen, right here. ISIS and also claims, if you yeah. could get that video ready, this is important because now you have the Islamic State not just terrorizing individuals and ransacking towns. Here's the story. ISIS claims responsibility for rocket attack against Egyptian Navy ship in Mediterranean Sea. <laughs> ISIS is attacking a country's <laughs> Navy. <laughs> Do you have that video available by any chance? No, it didn't pull through. Oh, it didn't? No. Uh, it is unbelievable. I mean, here's the picture. You could just come back to the picture. And uh, yeah. I mean, I watched the video. And this thing was smoking. I mean, there were no deaths, thankfully. Here. Yeah, it won't pull up. But they hit this boat, and it went in completely on fire. That's it, amazing. It no. is absolutely amazing, the capabilities. So, folks, when... We talk about the Mexican border, in which we talked about a lot earlier in the week with uh, Donald Trump and El Chapo Guzman. We were kind of laughing about it. Oh, and by the way, the store did sell out of the Donald Trump pinatas, so if anyone was looking to get one. <laughs> hey, Donald's leading in the got, polls, man. Going to have to get on the wait list. Don, Don, the Donald's leading in the polls, man. Yeah. You know what? I, ho I hope with the Donald thing, real quick, 10 seconds, 15 seconds on that, Donald's leading in the polls over uh, Bush and Walker, right? Yes. Now, you you look at that and you go, why in the heck is this guy just a crazy, you know, whack job up there? Well, you know what? You might say that, but somehow there's a little little parable. Some there's a farmer. Picture this: a farmer walking by a fence, a huge fence in, in a farmland, and on top of the fence there's a turtle. This farmer walks by there. He says, "Hey." How'd that turtle get it? Well, someone must have put him up there. So he grabs a turtle, and the turtle's fighting as he puts him next to the pond. He comes back again. Next day, the turtle's back on top of that fence. He goes, how in the heck is that turtle getting up there? He grabs the turtle, puts him in. Third day, he comes up, the turtle's up on top of the tree. And the turtle's just sitting there smiling. And he's looking, and he goes, how in the heck did that turtle get, get up there? But he looks up there, and he says, he's getting up there somehow. That's what Donald's doing. He's getting up there somehow. We don't know how he's getting up there, but he's becoming popular. And everybody's discounting. He is going to be on top of that fence post and that tree because he wants there. He wants to fight his way all the way up there. Mark, all the time. Mark. And so that's the Donald. Mark. How did the turtle get up in the tree? <laughs> nobody knows. That's like Donald. Oh. Don nobody knows how, how the turtle gets up there. Okay. I Donald really keeps doing it. Donald has his that. magic of how he gets up there. But he's up there, and people keep discounting him, but he's the, he is going to be on top. That's the, you can't drive down New York City without seeing six Trump Towers. The guy's worth billions of dollars. You discount him, you're foolish. Yeah. Well, here, here's another story. Uh, well, what, what I was going to say, just going back, the reason ISIS firing on a Navy ship and hitting it and damaging it but, and, and the relation to our southern border is this. Our southern border is so porous, and it is an absolute fact that the right. Mexican drug gangs are uh, transporting Islamic terrorists up through that border. I don't know if it's every day, but many, 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 and for a long, long time. You have ranchers finding these books, Korans, yep. prayer rugs, all over the place. We know Hezbollah's been doing it for years. So, and we have heard reports unconfirmed, but probably true, of the Islamic State coming through our border with Mexico also. If they're able to take down a Navy ship yes. from the Sinai, be ready for what they might eventually do here. Getting back to yesterday in Chattanooga, that was not the only 
planned attack on a military facility yes. around the world. If you come to my screen, here we have a report. France terror suspects plotted to behead military staffer, prosecutor's office says. So these guys were arrested prior to beheading the staffer. So this is a world thing. And today's the last day of Ramadan. They're, yeah. they're trying to get under that wire to get the 72 virgins. They believe in this stuff, folks. Yeah. They believe Anyone in this want stuff. to put any money if uh, I don't want Muhammad Yusuf Abdul Aziz is uh, with 72 virgins right now? Because <laughs> my money says no. No, no. Because this thing no. is garbage. Yeah, I know. It is garbage. Four yeah. terror suspects detained by French intelligence agents were plotting to behead a senior military staffer at a military site in southern France, a spokesman for Paris prosecutor's office said Thursday. Suspects plan to film the scene with a GoPro camera. You know, they're yeah, doing this for the shot. You know, that's part of terrorism. It's not just, it's not terrorism if all you do is chop someone's head off and no one else knows about it. It's like if a tree falls in the woods, to, you know, does it make a sound? They, they want this stuff out on YouTube and Vimeo and everywhere else because that's what does the terrorizing, okay? The terrorizing yep. is when you frighten people to change how they're going to live their lives. Unbelievable. Now, I need to get back to the big story of the week. And of that, of course, that is the P5 plus one nuclear deal with the Islamic Republic of <laughs> Iran. That's right, the Islamic Republic, Republic of Iran. Iran. I didn't name them that, they did. And, and what a piece of absolute trash it is. It's been trashed by everyone with half a brain in this country. It's got our allies in the Middle East completely upset. Israel, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, everyone is upset because they all know this is gonna lead to one thing and one thing only, and that is gonna be a military, a military nuclear program for the Iranians. And with their end times eschatology, it's, it's bound, bound to be used on its neighbors. Right. And if capable, right here. And it doesn't have to be an ICBM. It could be just something simple like a dirty bomb, an EMP, which we've covered in the past here uh, with Dr. Peter Pry. Um, yep. So, but we have Susan Rice out there defending yes. this. The, the, so, famous, so, the, the famous Susan Rice who came out and said uh, uh, it was Benghazi attack was due to a video. Yes, the same Susan Rice who is now the National Security Advisor. Um, now, realize part of this agreement is going to free up over $100 billion, with a B dollars for the Iranians. The Iranians are the key source of funding for Hezbollah the premier terrorist organization in the world. Let me tell you something. Hezbollah over the years has created a lot more havoc against the United States than the Islamic State has by miles. A lot more American blood on the hands of Hezbollah than the Islamic State, not even close. They threaten Israel yeah. regularly. Now, here is, this is something we touched on for a while yesterday with Ari Agozi. We talked about it with Andrew Bostom the day before and also Martin Sherman yesterday, that this, this huge pile of cash is only going to be more and better weapons for Iran's terror proxy, Hezbollah, Hamas, and others around the world. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it because <laughs> you want to know why? You want to have John Kerry tell us first, or you want to have Susan Let's Rice tell Susan us Let's say Susan Rice tell us Susan first. Rice, yeah. let's discuss that. And in fact, we should expect that some portion of that money would go to the Iranian military and could potentially be used well, for the kinds the other of... One first. I'll yes, play the, the uh, IAEA, which is a highly respected international organization, will field an international team of inspectors. Uh, and those inspectors will, in all likelihood, come from IAEA member states, oh, most of whom have diplomatic relations with Iran. We, of course, are a rare exception. So the no British one, so no Americans, diplomatic relations. No oh, Americans that, will be. No, I just want to be precise on this. Sorry for interrupting. No Americans will be on the ground in Iran actually inspecting. No Americans will be part of the IAEA inspection team. <laughs> will Americans be outside of the IAEA inspection team? Well, there are, are Americans there... in Iran on a daily basis, Wolf. So I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. I'm talking about American Liar. government officials Liar. or military officials who could be inspecting. We. <laughs> They're not going to be independent American inspectors separate from the IAEA. The IAEA will be doing inspect the inspections on behalf of the United States and the rest of the international community.
Okay, let me That's recap that for you. What she just said is there will be no United States members on the IAEA team that investigates the Iranian facilities. No U.S. members on that IAEA team. And there will be no independent U.S. inspections of those facilities. So the verification process that we've already trashed this week because it gives the Iranians 14 to 24 days to move stuff around for the I, even the IAEA to get in there and look at anything, <coughs> the United States isn't going to get to look at anything <laughs> ever, according to this deal. All right. And that's the best deal we can get. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Now, here she is on the money part. Right. And in fact, we should expect that some portion of that money would go to the Iranian military and could potentially be used for the kinds of bad behavior uh, that we have seen in the region uh, up behavior. until now. But the goal here, Wolf, was never uh, and was not designed to prevent them from engaging in bad behavior in the region. They're doing that today. Bad the goal terrorism. is to ensure that they don't have a nuclear weapon. And therefore, right. when they are engaging in that bad behavior, that much more dangerous. No, I just want to be precise. So there's really, once the money starts flowing in, it's their money correctly. Uh, as I pointed out, as you point out, it's their money. What They can do with it whatever they want. If they want to give a billion dollars in weapons to Bashar al-Assad or a billion dollars to Houthi rebels in no, Yemen. No, they can't, they can't do that. Uh, Wolf, because they'll still be under an arms embargo <laughs> that would prevent them from sending weapons. So they can't send weapons. weapons. What if they're just sending money? Well, they may be able to send money, yes. By the way, they may be able, be able to send, to send money. money. But. <laughs> okay, but, okay, but oh. here's the thing, Mark. Didn't you know... Didn't you know that sending money doesn't mean anything? Doesn't mean anything. Because come to my screen. Well, hold on. I want to play the rest of the no, clip no, no, here before we run out. No, go ahead and come to my screen real quick. Okay. Here's the story. Say. Okay, go ahead. Kerry dismisses Iran's financial support for Hezbollah, other terror groups. Kerry dismisses. Kerry dismisses it. Now go ahead and play that video. Okay. Well, just to be clear, uh, John Kerry video. Now. Oh, I, while they're under sanctions. I don't have it. There's yeah, but, nothing currently but the critics that is preventing point out they're them have, from They're going to have a lot more money as a, if, if, in fact, the sanctions... Um, they don't have more money. You don't Once have, they John have verifiably given up their nuclear weapons uh, capacity and any ability to reconstitute it. Right. <laughs> so money means nothing. Money means absolutely nothing on, on this. Uh, here it is. Here's, here's the article from Kerry dismisses Iran's financial support for Hezbollah. The notion that $100 billion, which Iran will obtain, is going to make all oh, the difference in the world. It. I do have it. You do? Play it, please. First of all, what Iran is doing in Yemen right now does not depend on money. What Iran <laughs> has done for years with Hezbollah does not depend on money. What Iran is doing, and by the way, they're fighting ISIL. Oh! And, 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 and helping Iraq oh, in, great. in many ways. But that Helped. has not depended on money. So, sure, something may go additionally somewhere. <laughs> okay, money doesn't. Money has nothing to do with with terrorism, with, terrorism, <laughs> with uh, being able to perform terrorist activity. Really, because money doesn't buy rockets, missiles, guns, heavy weaponry. Right, Mark? Have you ever been to a gun show? I like to go to gun shows. Have you ever been to one? Yeah, they give them away for free. Do they there. give the guns away, or do you have to purchase the guns no, when you they go give to them away a gun for free. show? And and plus, if you if an army, you know, you you want to. Feed your army. That's free too. You don't have to pay for right. food for your yeah, army. Yeah, no salaries. No salaries. You certainly don't have to pay the families of martyrs. No, no which has been no, going on free. for anyone that kills an Israeli free. for years. Free. Unbelievable. So John Kerry says financial support for terrorists don't help them be better terrorists. Folks, there's about a minute and a half left to go on the show. Uh, I want to thank Tom Trento for letting us fill in uh, for the week. There is a big, big, big event next Wednesday, July 22nd. If you are in our home market of uh, South Florida, if you live in Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, or Martin County, you must oh, yeah. get to downtown Fort Lauderdale next Wednesday, July 22nd, 5.30 p.m., Broward Boulevard and 3rd Avenue. It is a Stand with Israel event. It is to... to let your congressmen, your senators, let every politician know that they are against this Iran deal. That there is no way it should be allowed to go through with any, any resemblance of the way it looks right now. It's a danger to us and our allies.
it does nothing good. So please make sure you come out. If you're in New York, go to Manhattan, 42nd and 7th. Times Square, everyone knows where that is. So if you're in the tri-state area, get your buns to Manhattan and uh, grab yourself a nice dinner when it's all over. Mark, thank you for yep. uh, putting up with me on this side for the week. Yeah. Uh, everyone, if you wanna check out our stuff, go to theunitedwest.org. And if you wanna see a bunch of videos, go to youtube.com slash theunitedwest. Uh, and that's gonna do it. Happy end of Ramadan. Everyone have a great weekend. Brown Bye -bye. and third, Brown and third, 530 next Wednesday.